the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, also known as MS4. And it pretty much encompasses any conveyance systems that carry rainwater that are maintained and owned by a locality or another government entity. The MS4 system carries rainwater runoff from anywhere from lawns, roads, uh, you know, forest uh, that go into uh, the storm sewer system. You have storm drains that collect those into storm pipes or it could be roadside ditches. And those are pretty much conveyance systems to get the rainwater from that location to prevent flooding um, to streams. It really is a simple fact that every drop of water that lands on any land mass in Henrico County, in any yard, in any neighborhood, it's going to a nearby creek. And then ultimately it's going to make its way to the bay. So what you do on, on, your, on your property, on your lawn, uh, in your driveway, um, in the roadway, is ultimately going to make it to one of these waterways and then ultimately to the Chesapeake Bay. One of the most important factors um, for people to remember is that the only thing that is supposed to go down the storm drains is rainwater. There are some exceptions to that, uh, such as potable water, but you know things like grass clippings and leaves, they create blockages in the storm pipes, and not only that, but um, they harbor uh, the ability for some of those other nutrients and the decay, um, the bad nutrients, to get down into the system that goes into the waters. The main difference between storm sewer and sanitary sewer is that sanitary sewer is going to your local wastewater treatment plant. Storm sewer is going straight into stormwater infrastructure and then eventually making it to your creek and river completely untreated. So any leaves, any pet waste, any um, pollution, bottles, all of those things that hit inlets or hit your stormwater infrastructure go straight to your creek and river. And so you know, when you add up all those incremental pollutants, no matter what they are, sediment, phosphorus, nitrogen, and fertilizers, or whatever they may be, all of that adds up. And so the waterways become a catch basin for those. And unfortunately right now it's adding up too quickly and we need to work on, on reducing those to, to have a healthy bay. A certain amount of, of natural leaf litter um, is not a problem. In fact, it's a, it's a necessary thing for the energy and nutrient dynamics of stream ecosystems. Um, but when you get to a point where people are purposefully piling their leaves or it's an unnatural contribution in terms of these massive leaf piles or blowing your leaves into the nearest stream or shoving your leaves down an inlet, it then becomes kind of an overload situation. So in any situation where you have maybe a healthy dynamic, what's natural and what's normal, and then Taking that to a maximum, you have things like um, pet waste included in your leaves, which contributes bacteria to your waterways. You have um, excessive nutrient loading, particularly in the form of phosphorus, um, which eventually contributes to oxygen depletion in your waterways. And then you also just have the simple problem of clogging infrastructure. So, you know, with flooding and, um, and other things, if your inlets are blocked, your water's not going to be able to flow the way it should. As far as the health of the streams, if they get pushed all the way down uh, to the streams, it can overwhelm the streams. Uh, it can choke out light and then hence choke out life. Uh, as they decay, they can deplete the streams of oxygen. And so, uh, you know, that makes it harder for the animals and the other vegetation to live because, um, you know, they're choking out the oxygen. I think the most important take home is really just to do the best you can to, if you, if you rake your leaves and you put them outside by the curb, call us for vacuum leaf service. Um, it's a $30 charge, we're happy to come do it. We're more than happy to keep them out of the roads and out of inlets and from blocking traffic. Um, you know, if you, if you want to bag them, that's a, a free service offered by public utilities to pick up your bags. And other than that, mulching them, using them, reusing them. Um, great for gardens, great for landscaping, but really just 
make that extra effort just to keep them out of the roadways, away from inlets, um, and you know, especially out of the waterways and contributing to pollution in the county. The state has mandated a program to reduce the amount of stormwater that's getting down into the stream. So when we have development, uh, developers and contractors are required to implement practices that promote um, infiltration of the water, the runoff water, down into the ground. Uh, so you have things like bioretention basins, um, infiltration wells. Um, and different ways to promote that. And so when land is developed, not only do they have to treat the excess water that they would be pushing down into the streams, but they even have to reduce what it would have been before they developed. In addition to the county's responsibility in terms of maintaining the MS4 infrastructure, um, it is also our responsibility to be in compliance with our MS4 permit, um, which requires us to prevent things like yard debris and pet waste and litter from entering and clogging storm drains. So this is not just something that the county is tasked with in general, it's, it's actually to make sure that we are in compliance with our MS4 permit, which is something that we're held responsible through the Department of Environmental Quality and um, beyond them, the Environmental Protection Agency. There's various issues with our waterways uh, throughout the county, and it all goes back to what was done in the past. Over the history of, of our development of this county, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, there really was no stormwater management per se. The way we dealt with water is get it off your property as fast as possible. Some of our streams in the county have degraded due to this too much energy, too much water running through the system. So that leads to eroded streams and banks. So because of that situation, we need to come in and retrofit these systems. Throughout the county, we have streams um, that are in pretty decent condition. Uh, we have uh, many other streams that are in, in bad condition. Uh, you know, lots of pollution, litter, tires, um, that you know, people have just dumped down into the storm sewer or directly into the streams. The EPA has uh, put all the localities on a pollution diet and pretty much we are responsible for reducing the amount of those nutrients and sediment that are going into the bay. And so we have several different ways of doing that. One of the uh, main types of projects that we've been doing have been stream restoration projects. We find streams where the banks are completely eroded so badly that trees and vegetation are falling down into the streams and blocking them in some cases. And so what we do is we, uh, we hire a contractor and we go out and we do a stream restoration such as this and we recreate the floodplain so it slows down the additional flow that's been added from development. And so, you know, what we're doing in an uh, effort to, to meet our reductions that we're required to meet is um, to assess um, all the streams in the county and find ones that are in most need of repair. And those are the ones that we are targeting to do our restoration projects on. And really what we need to do is help manage how the water flows through the stream. And what I mean by that is, is it's just going too fast with too much energy. So we're recreating the patterns of the stream, uh, regrading the stream, and then anchoring the stream with some wooden structures to help hold the stream in place. Uh, and the biggest thing is we're just trying to get this stream to spread out and, and, and over into its, its floodplain bench and slow down and just release some of that energy uh, so it's not so erosive on the stream banks and stream bottom. And that's what this stream restoration is doing. By stabilizing these banks, uh, reducing the energy in the system, we retain the sediment on site, and therefore those pollutants are not moving downstream. Um, so they're not polluting ultimately, in this case, the Chickahominy River, and then ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. Water is the most important commodity that we have as humans. We need it to survive. So, you know, when the waters get polluted, 
um, where are we going to be? When these uh, pollutants and nutrients, um, bad nutrients, that get down into the storm drains and eventually into the streams, uh, it affects life as a whole. It's not just out of sight, out of mind, uh, because eventually it's going to get to where it will affect people uh, who, who might not necessarily interact with the environment. The more polluted the water gets, the more costly it is to treat it and to make sure that it's safe enough to drink. And also with uh, wildlife, you know, we get so much of our food source from the waters, you know, fish, crabs, clams, oysters. So those things will start dying off and they'll become even more of a commodity and those will wind up increasing in cost as well, um, you know, because the demand is high and the supply is low. Uh, so it very much financially and economically affects everybody. Let's look at water a different way. It's as much a mindset as it is um, regulating and then changing the things. But with that said, we have changed the regulations, so we are detaining more water on site, um, not releasing it into the, the waterways with the um, erosive velocities that we have, you know, 20, 30 years ago. It's very rewarding to see um, the turnaround and, and the betterment of the environment there. There's an aesthetic value to keeping your creeks and your infrastructure clean, um, free of pet waste and debris and leaf piles. And, and really, over time, um, those kind of contributions degrade your living space and degrade the value of your living space. I think we all want clean air, clean water, and nice places to recreate in the county.